everybody, welcome back to Print Potter Pelt. Today I have my sister Tatiana here again, but this time she's not a model, she's actually helping me. Um, and we're in my kitchen, so I'm just gonna get comfortable. Um, so a couple weeks ago, I went to Boots to go and get some stuff to set me up for our trip away to Scotland. And um, I spent quite a bit of money in there. Um, and Boots, for Americans that don't know, it's like a glorified Walgreens. Walgreens or yeah, so. yeah, or it's like an Ulta. So I went and had a little pit stop in there um, after a meeting and I bought myself some Bumble and Bumble sea salt spray. But I thought I'd give this a go because I wanted something different for my hair. I hadn't been, really been wearing it wavy very much so I wanted to try something. And I thought it was really nice. It smelled really good. However, I felt it was a little bit sticky for my hair and it made my sister's hair a little bit frizzy. And I just thought well, there's probably a lot of things that I could have changed about it. And it sort of gave me this idea that, well, if it's not perfect and I've spent 22 pounds on it, which is effectively what, almost $40. Why don't I just make my own so that it does suit my hair type? Um, no and chemicals. And no chemicals. Had that and I used it, but obviously I had an idea that then moved on to the hair oil that I bought at Boots as well. I spent, this thing is tiny, I spent about 25 pounds on this and it's by Ojon, it's called Rare Blend Oil, and it's hair therapy. It says you only need one drop. However, I have really thick hair, and it's quite coarse at times, it's quite um, porous, and one drop wasn't enough. Well, I used it um, probably only a couple times, and it's already gone down quite a bit, and I hate that. I like my stuff to last for a while. I felt a little bit sad because it cost me so much money and I couldn't really figure out how it was that good. I do have an Ojan oil which is bigger and you can use about four drops and that's quite good but then that one can be a little bit too oily so I was just confused of why it was so great. And it just basically said to put on damp hair uh, for restyling or protect against heat and damage or you can put it on dry hair for restorative treatment um, and to enhance high gloss shine but I don't feel like it really did any of those things. So again, going back to the sea salt spray, I thought, oh, why don't I make my own? Um, I've never tried it before, but surely I can make something that suits my hair better. Um, then that made me go on, well, maybe I should make something else, um, which I absolutely love, which is my dry shampoo. And I used to review these all the time. And we love our Batiste. And I have this Lush one that I got called um, No Drought. And this one is quite good, but it is still quite expensive for what it is, and I don't really like the smell of it. It's, uh, yeah, it's what is it, grapefruit oil and lime oil. Better. Yeah, it's yeah, it's quite, it, to me it smells like toilet cleaner. It's not supposed to, it's obviously supposed to smell like lime, but I just don't like that on my hair. And so, again, I thought, well, why don't I make my own, because this is about £10, um, which again is, is about $18 in the States. Well, surely I can make this for cheaper. So, anyway, moving on. What we're going to do today is we're going to make these three products. I've never done this before, so we're just going to see how it goes. We're literally, like, just doing this for the first time today. So, so my sister is going to show you how to create a dry shampoo, and she's going to run through some of these products. We're going to start with the dry shampoo, and one of the first things that you need to is start with a the salt. Container. Yeah, we, so, uh, oops. so I bought this salt and pepper container from... What was it? Wilkinson. It was like 45p, so it's like a dollar. This is what we're going to use to shape the dry shampoo onto our hair. So go ahead and start. In addition, you'll need two tablespoons of baking soda which, or, bi or bicarbonate of soda, which either one will work. Regardless, you need two tablespoons. And you'll all be mixing this into a massive bowl. And then you can use one to two drops, or maybe even three, but recommended one to two drops of your favorite like essential oil, so any rose or lavender, any smell that you like the best. Or we came up with this, you could also substitute in some of your favorite perfumes. Yeah, because so I have any like of your it, little samples, you can mm, use them up. Yeah, my mom always gives me loads of sample perfumes. So I, I have like, mm. what is it? Chanel, I have Dolce & Gabbana. Yeah, I've got my Dolce & Gabbana there. Um, I've got loads of different things. So I figured you probably could use those. The only thing is that they're not going to be as concentrated as an essential oil, but you could sort of just add and see. You don't want to make the mixture too liquidy because obviously it won't shake, so it needs to stay quite dry. That's why 
an essential is probably better, but um, you could probably try this as well. We'll have to test it. We'll Next. also have to have half a cup, which we've already measured, but it would yeah. be your cornstarch or your... Corn flour. Corn flour. Corn flour one. in the UK. It's the same thing. So So the lighter cornstarch will be for lighter blondes and such, and then your cocoa powder, which would also be the same amount. It would be half a cup, either one. Um, for darker hair colors, so black and dark brown. Yeah, or yeah, you could, yeah. So like if you've got like red hair. You can mix you can, them. Yeah, you could probably mix corn them. Corn flour. I don't know if you've ever used it before, cornstarch before, but it, when you cook with it, it sort of soaks up all the moisture and it makes things thicker. So it obviously will make your hair thick and it will soak up any oil. But I haven't really put chocolate cocoa on my hair before, so I don't know how it would do the same, but I would probably recommend mixing the two just so that you would have that sort of soaking up agent. So maybe cocoa powder will do it. I, I don't know, but I'm not gonna try it because it's gonna make my hair dark. So, um, what else do we need? Oh yeah, so that's it, isn't it? And yeah. you just mix it in a big bowl and throw okay. it in a shaker and that's about it. So there's half a cup. Half a cup for my light hair. Oh dear. Everywhere. Oh dear. My essential oil, I would like to use rose. Two drops. One, two. Okay. And um, yep. carbonate of soda. There's your tablespoon. So what I do is I would. Bicarbonate is good as well because that'll sort of get rid of any odor. Um, you'll probably find it in a lot of your Lush products if you do tend to use Lush because um, it, it eliminates odor. It can be in deodorants and things like that and you can also clean with it. There you go, there's one. There you go. And the other. There you go. Cool. Alright, so we're just going to stir that up. While well, my we'll sister fills that, that in, I'm going to go on to the next thing, the sea salt spray. Right, so I actually use my husband's styling cream that we have in the house. Shh, don't tell him. Because it actually does like give his hair like a nice texture like gel, and, but it doesn't have all the crud that you find in a lot of other products. And also it's in the house so I don't have to spend any more money. But this one's dirty by Lush and it's quite nice because it smells really lovely. Oh, here it is. Ta-da! Okay. Um, so we'll use that in a minute. So I'm going to take, uh, how much do I need of this? I need one tablespoon of this, but I'm actually not going to use much because I have such a small bottle. So I'm going to make this up. I'm probably going to use, uh, I say one teaspoon, so of that. And I'm going to take about a teaspoon of salt. And you want ground salt, not like coarse salt because then you'll just have chunks of salt. Then next I need some coconut oil and I went and bought this huge thing. If you have a friend that has some coconut oil, maybe ask if you can borrow a teaspoon. I mean, it's not that much. Um, or you can go and get some. It's a good investment. It is a good investment because you cook with it and it's, it's probably one of the healthier oils to cook with. Um, you can use it as a body moisturizer, you can use it as a hair conditioner, you can use it as a lip balm. And obviously, we're going to use it as our sea salt spray. So, um, though it can be a little bit pricey, it has a lot of uses, and so it's not really going to go to waste. I'm going to open this up. Oh my god, that smells so nice. Oh, I want to eat it. Mm. Oh my. That's so nice. Can right. put that on bread? That's butter. I just like. I don't know. I just eat it. It smells so nice. It doesn't taste like anything. It literally is just cocoa, coconut. So we're gonna take a what's this? Uh, a same teaspoon measure. Yeah, a teaspoon of coconut oil. You kind of have to scrape it. I'm gonna attempt to put that in. Okay, so I've just got myself some warm water, and I'm gonna pour that into here. Now. The measurements for this, I think you're just going to have to wing it depending on how big of a bottle you have. My original um, notes that I had to make this was one tablespoon of hair gel, one tablespoon of the coconut oil, a cup, was it a cup and a half of the water? Yeah. Um, but because this is tiny, um, it's not going to be that much. So I'm just going to see how this goes. So I'm going to try and pour this in without spilling. I'm so going to spill it, aren't I? It's like pouring a shot. Okay. All right. 
Um, I've poured that into my bottle now, as you can see. Now you can also add a, a bit of conditioner if you want. You can add some more essential oil. So I'm going to take some of my conditioner. This one's by Arbonne and this is um, the Nourishing Daily Conditioner because I do have quite dry hair. And I'm just going to pop a little dollop of that. There you go. Two little squirts. I'm just going to put a couple of drops. It's really strong so a little goes a long way. And then I'm going to get my lid and I'm going to shake it up. It's quite nice. I might add a little bit more salt to it. I'm making such a mess. <laughs> This is why we're doing this in the kitchen. I use them both. Really? Yeah. So I'm just going to use this on my sister and see how it goes. She's got really straight hair. Oh, that's nice. I can't see. Oh. Cool. Okay, so we dug my sister's hair with the sea salt spray, which is brilliant. It smells really nice. Yeah, um, it's, nice. It's not as sticky as the Bumble and Bumble, is it? Which was good. So, um, I'm going to use this to make my sandwich. I'm going to take coconut oil again. I'm just going to fill this with the coconut oil and then I'm going to add my essential oil. Now, right, so I'm going to get my little spatula, which is all dirty. And I'm just going to scoop the coconut oil into there. And the nice thing is when the temperature is uh, a little bit cooler, like it is in our house right now, how cold is it? It's about 15 degrees in here. It's quite cold in here at the moment. Um, the coconut stays quite solid. Obviously on warmer weather, it is going to get a little bit runnier. So if you live in a warmer climate, then you probably want to get one of these squeezy bottles I just showed you because that way um, you can just sort of squeeze some out and it doesn't run everywhere. So I'm just going to squeeze that into there. Which smell should we do? Should we do... Let's do rose. Let's do rose again? Okay. Or lavender is nice. Lavender is nice. Let me see. Some people think lavender smells like grandma's though. I don't think it does. Mm -mm. My grandma doesn't smell like that, but she did. No. Mm. <laughs> Might make me fall asleep. Let's just do rose. Do, or we could try the ylang ylang. Let me see. That one's okay. I'm just going to put a couple of drops in. One, two, three. And I'm just going to take the back of this spoon and just mix it in. Yeah. That smells really nice. Mm -hmm. Right. So let's try that. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this and it melts in your fingers really nicely. That one's salt. I want that. So I'm just going to melt that. And just run it on my dry ends. How does it feel? Don't you know that my, head, my fingers are really oily. I think a little will go a long way. Because even that little bit that I had, it just keeps melting. Doesn't it? Mm, it's nice though. feels really lovely. So now I just want to try the dry shampoo. Can you... Where's the dry shampoo? Right here? Yeah. Okay, you want to put the lid on our new hair serum. I'll have to make one for you as well for your room. Thank you. Okay. Can you see? It's a lot going on. Yeah, because I can't see. Does it work? It does We have work. made our hair serum, which is really nice. It's made my hair really lovely. And it's probably something that you could do if it's a little bit heavy for your hair, if you've got quite fine hair could be a really good treatment in the evening or when you go to bed and you can wake up when your hair be nice and soft yeah. and silky. Soft and um, silky. So especially if you do like a big pot of it rather than a small one. 
Um, and then we have made dry shampoo, dry shampoo which is fantastic. I mean, the dry shampoo costs next to nothing, didn't it? It was yeah. really inexpensive, and I just had the essential oil in the house. But if you had a perfume or something, you could use that as well. Yes. So comment, like, and subscribe. Yay! Up top, up top, or down below, or down, or wherever you want. Oh, over in there. the middle. Too slow. To the window. To the, to wall. the floor. Oh wait. To the window. To, to the, the wall. wall. To, to the, the wall. wall. Okay, you can't <laughs> see that. No. Okay. That's what we do. Uh, okay, bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>